Hi everyone, I'm Steffi D. And I'm Lisa H. And welcome to Check In From Away. This week we are having an over the rainbow reunion. Thanks for joining us. Hey Lisa. Hey. Do you like my outfit? Yeah, it's very Alice in Wonderland. What the hell, Lisa? I'm dressed up as Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. Okay, fair. Also, uh, I think you're dressed up as the uh, Wicked Witch of the West. Burn. Basically how you dress like every single day. Oh, are we in a fight now? <laughs> we are in a fight now. But Lisa, I just want to say I am excited, jokes aside, about this week's episode because I used to watch Over the Rainbow on CBC every single week following these girls and their journey to becoming the Dorothy's. Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, and also, like, we have Tom Allison joining us. He was one of the judges. Not only is he so talented, I've had the opportunity to work with him before. He's also so handsome. He's so good looking. We love you, Tom Allison. <laughs> oh, and one more thing, Lisa. Um, for Halloween one year, in this exact dress, I dressed up as an eliminated contestant from Over the Rainbow, complete with dripping mascara, holding the shoes. I have the photo evidence to prove it. Hi, I'm AJ Bridell, and I play third on Over the Rainbow, and uh, I was Lauren in Kinky Boots. All right, hi, I'm Steph LaRochelle. I placed runner up in Over the Rainbow on CBC. So I've done, uh, recently I did Dear Evan Hansen with, with Mervish. I played Zoe Murphy. Uh, hi, my name is Danielle Wade, and I actually won the role of Dorothy on Over the Rainbow. Your shirt right now is basically a rainbow. Yeah. Ooh, that was a good angle. <laughs> Perfect angle. I'm Tom Allison, and I have been in, uh, for Mervish, I've done the original Canadian companies of uh, Miss Saigon and uh, Rent and The Who's Tommy. And as well, I've been a judge on Over the Rainbow, The Search for Dorothy, which was a blast. Do you remember that you and I performed at a YPT fundraiser where I was wearing a Dorothy dress and playing Dorothy and you were the cat in the hat? Yep, oh I do, I have pictures to prove it, oh yes. What color Dorothy were you? Orange. Orange Dorothy, were you happy about that or not happy about that? Shocked about that. Shocked about that. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, orange was never a color I, I really considered. Yeah. For me uh, at the time. You were the green Dorothy, correct? That's right. That's okay, right. so were you happy about being green Dorothy or not happy? Like, how did you feel about the color? The color, I think I, I, I think I wanted to be purple because purple is one of my favorite colors. But you know what? I can't complain because the green was, you know, it was fine. There were a couple yeah. different shades of green though. So I was, um, I think they called it Kelly Green. And there was also a lime green Dorothy, which is interesting. So let's just talk about it for a second because it haunts me in my sleep. And I love the costume designer of the show and he was so, so sweet, but he made me lime green Dorothy. Not even like a, a nice purple or a, a pink. I was lime green, baby. I, it was like in the dark, you could see me. And all the fans in the audience, if they were wearing a lime green shirt, you could see them because they were glowing in the dark. Can I make a link between your character in Killjoys as well as you being a judge on Over the Rainbow? How fabulous your outfits and your jewelry was. <laughs> uh, what I've noticed on Killjoys is that you, all, your character also wears very extravagant jewelry, and you have you were the best dressed in the show. Oh, bless your heart. Bless you. you know our our costume person. Um, oh, I forget his name now. Shoot, but he was so extraordinary. And we were talking about you know what I like to wear, and I said, here's the thing: I don't wear ties. I look really weirdly ordinary and and kind of blah in ties. He's like. Oh, I find that hard to believe. You know, very sweet. But he said, let's try a tie. We went shopping. I tried a tie. And he went, oh, okay. yeah. I, said, I wear jewelry. I wear jewelry. I, I, I can work a piece of jewelry like it's a full-time job. One of my favorite moments, for sure, was backstage before my first performance. 
uh, Jeannie Wise, who is one of the vocal coaches on, on the show, um, love her. Um, she, <laughs> I was last that night on the, the first, uh, the first episode. I, I, my performance, uh, closed the night and I was so nervous. I was shaking, so nervous, freaking out. And she just, just looked at me and grabbed my shoulders and she was like, calm down. You'll be fine. No one's going to die. You're going to be great. And I, I, and it was, it was the most nervous I've ever been. And, the, and nobody's ever been able to like channel the, my nerves for me in that way. And like, look deep into my soul and say, no one's going to die. This is theater. You're going to be fine. And I think about that moment all the time. I have to say, we used to come home at night and we would all, it's pretty bad because we would order McDonald's a lot. So our wrangler, Mike Yerksa, um, would always put RuPaul's Drag Race on and we would sit there in this huge mansion in the East End and just like eat McDonald's and watch Drag Race. And it was amazing. <laughs> Winning seems like a bit of, I don't really even remember. I know that sounds silly because like it's a huge moment in my life and it changed everything for me, but I don't remember that day very well because it was such a blur. Like so many things were happening and my favorite, my favorite memory all the time we spent in the house with all the girls was so fun. And it's so, we always say it's lame because we were in this competition, but we all actually got along really well, which is so impressive. One thing I'll never forget was when um, Sir, or I guess Lord Andrew Lloyd Webber had come to the show. He came twice. He actually enjoyed the show so much. He came back again. He was only supposed to come one time, but he came the first time and he, there's a pre like a rehearsal taping that we watch in the afternoon, the judges and and, and him, um, and then um, and then they do the evening show. So in the taping, he all of a sudden got very upset and he stopped everything. And was like, wait, wait, something's wrong. Something's wrong. We're like, what's going on? Something's wrong with the sound. And the technicians all went, no, it's all normal. And he like he really was like, I need the producer up here to talk about this. Something's going on. Something's turned on. Something's not right. They don't sound right. They don't sound as good as they should. And and they couldn't find anything. So he had his um, sort of, one of his head sound people was there with him, I think uh, working on the show. And he sent him into the truck where they were mixing it. He said, go and find it. He went, okay. He went down one looking and there's this one little button that was compressing their voices. And you hardly, we wouldn't hear it, but his ears are so uncanny. He flipped the switch. He said, try it now. And they started with, thank you, carry on. Meeting Cindy was, a, a great moment for me because um, she, I mean, she's amazing and the way she speaks is so funny. She said, just make sure you're in the pocket. Just make sure you're singing when you're singing, you're in the pocket. And just like having that personality that is she's larger than life um, as, as a mentor on that, that was a really cool day. We did have this one lovely evening where we did, um, we did a sort of like meet and greet with the Come From Away cast, which was awesome. So I got to see Steffi and some of her friends there. And you um, see probably there too. I organized it. You organized it. No way. There we go. That was, that was really fun. Toto <laughs> in Toronto. We had three Totos in Toronto. We only really used one. One day she decided to jump off the little bale of hay on stage. And the whole set is like forced perspective. So it gets smaller as it goes back. But if little Toto gets further and further back, she becomes Godzilla Toto. And she, cause it was a, Tilly was a lady, but she got so big compared to like my little house in the background. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like somewhere over the right, like the, the moment you're waiting for in the show and the dogs like wreaking havoc on the village behind us. The opening night of Miss Saigon, we actually opened the Princess of Wales Theater. And I'll never forget being on that stage with the energy of the crowd in this huge, kind of glamorous, fantastical show. Um, I will never forget that, that, that um, curtain call and the energy that came at us and how we all felt after whatever, six or eight weeks of rehearsal. So that's certainly a highlight for me. Um, I was the helicopter guy in Miss Saigon. I think that that's my big claim to fame in that show. And, um, one day the helicopter sort of came in, but it was kind of like like bouncing and coughing and the the propellers weren't working and it kind of just went doom, 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 and hung there. And it was the weirdest like, sorry about your ticket for a hundred and whatever dollars, but uh, live theater, hey! <laughs> <You know? laughs> I also got to sing a Cindy Lauper song on uh, Over the Rainbow, which is a cool. 
connection. Awesome. I saying true. I saying true colors, and I got the words wrong, which is not. Right. Oh my gosh, you did. Like, Yeah, I was on. I was on a on a bench, and uh, I it was like you with the sad eyes. Don't be discouraged. So I realized I had a, an umbrella. This is an umbrella. It's hard to take courage. It was raining in a world full of people. You can knew my status and a darkness inside you makes you feel so small. Yeah, it was a good time. I think I was the first person to mess up their lyrics live, and I thought I thought I would get chewed up. I thought everyone would just like re like you can't even learn your lyrics. What's wrong with you? And nobody noticed. Not even any of the girls. I'm gonna be like, did you did you hear what just happened to me? The the catastrophe that just happened? And they were like, no, no, that no. People don't notice us. It, it the things that you think are huge deals are not at all a big deal. But to me, in that moment, I was. <gasps> I remember one day in, uh, we were rehearsing, we did a, a group song, like a group, uh, what was it, You Can't Stop the Beat from Hairspray. Mm, yes. we, we had this picnic table um, and we were rehearsing one day on the stage with all the dancers and stuff. And the picnic table had to like move and we were doing, we were like standing on it and doing crazy dances. And then it just kind of went like and broke the stage. <laughs> and the, the I guess it was like a plexiglass sort of cover on the stage that just like shattered and, and cracked so we had to get off and they had to fix it because I was lime green and I would sweat if I would raise my arms my sweat was my like bodysuit turned orange because of my sweats or my deodorant somehow very good information top class information however so I would be like lifting my arms and on gi giant orange spots in the middle what? On national television. So that was good. That was really good. Also, I one day walked off the edge of the stage, like the second time we were on stage, a stage manager's nightmare. I know. I apologize. <laughs> I have Wait, a you live taping or no? no? In a rehearsal, like the second time we were on stage or the first time we were on stage, they ended up changing the, the deck because I was one of like 10 people to do it. But I have a scar on my back right here from where I fell. <laughs> and like hit the edge of the stage. What? I'm dying right now. I can't. Dorothy's scarred. She's scarred forever right there. It's like this big, but. And so you carry your over the rainbow experience with you literally everywhere you go. Yes, right on my back. <laughs> Hold on, hon, we're gonna funny hug. I got some aspirin down at United Road. And can we shake up hearts and want a brand new start? Yes. It's actually my favorite performance because I had the most fun in that one, for sure. Uh, it was the least Dorothy performance of them all. Uh, but that was, I think, the second last week. I think that was week seven or eight. eight. Anyway, it was, it was near the end when I kind of had a feeling where I sat in the group and, and what my, my casting maybe was for this, which was not... But it, you know, I kind of picked picked up on uh, that I had an opportunity to show uh, me. Hello, Get this. Just look at me dressed up somewhere to go. We'll put on a show. And I remember being really nervous in the in the. In the rehearsals, um, I probably like broke down at some point because I did that a lot. It was a very emotional experience for me. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I think I just felt like I, I I did a very good job after you know getting on the stage and doing it. But it put me in the bottom too. Hey, big spender! Hey, big spender! a little time. I say I'm a mover lacking flair. Oh, wow. Like, I am just not a great dancer. <laughs> well, you could have fooled me. You look great. What so, no, I'm just uncomfortable. I'm getting so much better now, but I, I, I'm uncomfortable in my long limbs. So I remember them being like, you have to strut. And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> like, I don't know how to walk down the street, let alone in these, like, tiny little heels. 
like guys, it's it's not very hard, but for me at 19 being like, okay, yeah, I, c I could do this for sure. We had an in-depth conversation about how traumatizing it must have been for the girls who got eliminated and had to take off their shoes, give over the shoes, sit on the moon and fly away. Like, I just remember thinking, I was like, this is so savage. <laughs> I, I don't think it dawned on some of us until later on in the competition when, it, it, that, like, how, how bad it was. It was kind of different when it was all 10 of us going, we thank you very sweetly for doing it so neatly. You've ditched her so completely that we thank you very sweetly. Mm -hmm. I think it took a while for us to realize how uh, deep that was cutting. <laughs> but I was in one elimination and I had to take the shoes off of Colleen lover and oh. hand them over <laughs> to the judges, like, a, like, like an offering, like, 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 please take, I've, I have slain a Dorothy, please take these shoes. <laughs> I mean, the whole thing is quite hilarious. You know, you have to remove your shoes and then hand your sweaty shoes to a judge and then fly in a moon. But the whole thing is that, you know, they would fly and they would sing and then, you know, it would cut and the show would be over, but then they would just be hanging up there sitting in a moon. We'd have to wait for them to get pulled down. It was kind of really sad. If you watch the like results show, I guess it's called, I am sobbing every single time. Like just sobbing, looking up at them. I'm like, I'm so sorry that you're up there. <laughs> we all technically did like a safety check for it. And I turned to the moon men, as we affectionately titled them, and said, I'm never doing this again. And you, were and you won, you never did it again. I didn't mean it like I'm gonna win, but I just turned, I was like, I'm never doing this again. And they're like, okay. I remember we used to joke because the, the globe, like the little glass ball had a pair of shoes in them and you could see what size they were. Oh. And everyone was like, well, it's not my size, so they're not mine. They weren't a real size. They were like size four. They weren't going to fit anybody. Oh. But, but I remember everyone was like, well, it's not me. It's not me. No, I'm not going to win. Our first rehearsal, when we got to see that, Louise couldn't be there, so she was there that evening for the recording. And she, <laughs> she was mortified. She didn't really hear about it, and so she, and she hadn't seen the, the originals in London for the production. So she was watching, like, no, no, not the moon. Oh, no, oh, not the shoes. Oh, no. Like, she was so horrified. She just had, was prepped for it, so I had to suppress hysterical laughter as I watched her have a break on these poor girls. That's too much. Danielle, would you rather be able to sing over the rainbow for the rest of your life, but it's the only song you can sing, or be able to sing a hundred songs for the rest of your life, but sing them really badly? Over the rainbow. Ooh. Okay, so that's really interesting because for me, I think the variety would be important, but then if I'm like bad at singing a hundred songs, like, I don't know, I can still go to karaoke though. You could go to karaoke, but truthfully, and this sounds lame, but it never really gets boring to sing that song. AJ. Yeah. Would you rather have to wear the Kinky Boots boots for the rest of the pandemic without being able to take them off ever, or, have to sing over the rainbow, sitting on the moon, floating away, once a week on television for the rest of your life. <laughs> I'm wearing those boots, are you kidding me? Come on. <laughs> I'm wearing those boots. Stephanie. Yeah. Here we go. Would you rather be able to only watch reruns of Over the Rainbow for the rest of your life or have to watch Dear Evan Hansen in its entirety every single night for the rest of your life? Oh. I think I'd have to go with Dear Evan Hansen. 
Yeah. Any particular reason you picked that answer? I just don't want to watch myself, my 17 year old self singing every night, you know? That's totally fair. Tom, here's yours. Okay. Would you rather never be able to wear jewelry ever again or have to wear a suit entirely made of jewels for the rest of your life without being able to take it off ever? I would wear the suit of jewels for the rest of my life without ever taking it. Danielle, here we go. Would you rather share a house with the munchkins in The Wizard of Oz for the rest of isolation or play Toto on stage on all fours eight times a week in the show? Toto. <laughs> Guys, Toto is the best character in the whole show. <laughs> all right. Why is that? Because he gets entrance applause every single time, every single night, every show. <laughs> AJ. Would you rather have to perform a different song live on national television every single night for the rest of the pandemic, or never be able to perform ever again? Not the easy first one, obviously. What are we doing? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, the first one, every day. What is wrong? Where's the because bad? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie, are you ready for another would you rather? Yes. Okay. Would you rather own an apple orchard but never be able to eat apples again for the rest of your life or fall out of a tree and break your arm once a year for the rest of your life? Break my arm once a year? Oh. I'll and you fall out of a, like you fall out of a tree and break your arm. Yeah, I'll like, I'll I'll give up the apples. <laughs> okay, Tom. Would you rather Play Janice Mosier and come from away for the rest of your career. Uh-huh. Or win over the rainbow and have gotten to play Dorothy instead of Danielle in The Wizard of Oz ever. I would never want to take that away from our lady, so I think I would play Janice. Oh wait, you would take it away from me? You didn't say <laughs> instead of you. You didn't say instead of you and in that production. It could be a different production. You didn't, you didn't specify that. Well, I'm re-specifying the question. Thanks for joining us on this week's episode of Check In From Away. See you next Tuesday. Cheers. Cheers. I saw you play the role. Oh gosh. In The Wizard of Oz, you were amazing. Can I come clean about why I was coming to see it though? To see if I was bad? No! Oh my God, no. <laughs> I went to go see the show. I bought a ticket last minute because the Dora nominations had just come out and I was nominated for uh, Cinderella at White yeah. TV and Lisa Horner was nominated for The Wicked Witch of the West in Wizard of Oz. So I went to go see the show to like suss, it, suss out my competition. Yes. So then when I went, literally, I always shake the playbill or whatever to see if any understudies are on. And the leaflet comes out and it's like, the role of Lisa Horner would be played by. And I was like, you have to be kidding me. <laughs> so I never saw Lisa Please Horner do it. it. Oh, I'm sorry that you missed it. <laughs> sorry, what? Did you win the Dora? No, of course not. Lisa freaking Horner won the freaking Dora. What do you think? <laughs>